I'm Lisa Halk here with Lisa Sweet. That's We're the, right. Lisa's doubled today. That's right. So Lisa joined me today because we want to do a recap after the round table that came on earlier in the week about coronavirus. Yes, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes. So Lisa, why don't you start by telling everybody First of all, they probably know you're the co-founder of NACA. We'll start there. Okay. But, and you're also the chief clinical officer. Right. Why don't you tell us about your education? Well, you know, I um, took the road that uh, the best nurses take, and I started as a nursing assistant when I was in high school. I was a senior in high school, and I worked as a nursing assistant for a couple of years, and then I went on to a Votech school and got my LPN. Mm -hmm. So as an LPN, I worked as a med nurse, you know, the med cart was taller than I was half the time, but worked as a, a nurse in skilled nursing homes, and then I eventually went back, and, um, well, I took time out to have a kid, mm -hmm. you know, that always puts you back on your timeline a little bit, went back and got my RN, and I worked in the intensive care unit for about three years, mm -hmm. and I loved it, but the remainder of my career has been in geriatrics, particularly in skilled nursing. Okay. So you have a very extensive background. So 30 plus mm -hmm. years. Yes. Yeah. So and you have been doing a lot of reporting on COVID-19. I have. You were contacted by the Washington Post and by mm -hmm. several other newspapers. Mm -hmm. And so yes. our own Lisa Sweet was in the Washington Post being quoted. We're very proud of her for that. Well, thank you. Yes. We also appeared in an India Times newspaper yeah. out of the country of India. That is amazing. Yeah. So that's wonderful that people all around the world are hearing about you because you well, just want to educate everybody. Right, right. I, you know, it's unfortunate circumstances. Um, but yes, anything that I can say or do that will help somebody protect themselves or someone else or, or even help them understand a little bit more about the virus. Um, that's what we're aiming to do. Okay, and where do you get your data from? Unlike some people who think that if they read it on the internet, it's true. You know, you have those people um, that think that. Um, I actually get my, my information from the CDC, Centers for Disease Control um, and Prevention, CDC, uh, cdc.gov, great website. Mm -hmm. They have information for the lay people, healthcare professionals, um, healthcare facilities, and um, a lot of information ta tailored to specific groups. And so I use the CDC and also the World Health Organization, WHO, is a good source. Mm -hmm. Very reputable source. Yes. So, yes. Okay. Well, why don't we start by telling the viewers about the symptoms of COVID. The symptoms can vary from person to person, but uh, in everything that I have read, a lot of the data has come out of China because mm -hmm. it first appeared in China in December. And so they have had more time um, to actually kind of catalog the data and things like that. Um, the symptoms seem to be primarily fever, cough, shortness of breath and fatigue um so it, very similar to what a cold would be like or even influenza yes sure. symptoms are very similar um but fever seems to really be um to me in everything that i have read fever seems to be kind of a cardinal symptom um is that a mild fever or is it a high fever it's a high fever okay um i uh had watched a news special on television and they had actually interviewed um, one of the elderly men who he and his wife were on one of the cruise ships mm. and he tested positive for coronavirus and she didn't okay and um, he was fine one minute and like within four hours he was running a hundred and three degree fever oh my goodness so um, anybody who is compromised if they have underlying health conditions especially lung conditions mm -hmm. um, they are very susceptible and it can be very rapidly uh, rapidly acting in them um, one thing that i have read whereas influenza can be particularly hard on children mm -hmm. you know you hear about uh, death rates in children from influenza. Sure, and you hear older and younger. Uh -huh, mm -hmm. And that's tragic. 
However, it seems like COVID-19 is a little bit easier on younger people. They're tolerating it better, children, and the people who it's wreaking havoc on are older people. Actually, um, they say that the risk is age 50 and above. Okay. Now, now specifically, specifically, the older you get, the greater the risk. I think that the most serious cases and most of the fatalities have occurred in people age probably 65 and over. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up because I keep hearing on the news, they say it affects the elderly. And I'm like, how are they defining elderly? Some right. people think if you're on AARP, right. you're a right. senior. Right. Other people think, no, you need to be 70 right. to be elderly. Right. So I'm glad to know but, how they differentiate that. But you know, you need to look at, and I know this is a strange way of thinking about it, but age 50, to me, that's not old. No, we're a young pups. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Um, but age 50 kind of seems to be the cutoff point, and then the further past age 50, the more the greater the risk okay. and the more, more vulnerable they are. You know, there's a t the attorney from New York who uh, would train in and out of Grand Central Station. He had been, I think he had been west in Washington. He tested positive for it, as did his family, but he's only, I think he's only 50. Mm. And he's hospital. I think he's hospitalized right now. So, wow. um, you know, people who are testing positive or presumptive positive, mm -hmm. which means that they have the symptoms, they have the risk factors, but they haven't been tested yet. They're telling those people to quarantine at home mm -hmm. to prevent the spread. Interesting. And I know they've done a lot of, I've seen a lot of different cities doing some really interesting things like buying out hotels, old oh, yeah. hotels and stuff. Yes. Not so much for the people like you or I that might get it, but for their homeless communities right. and, and you know things like that. People that don't have a place to go take care of themselves. They want to make sure they right. can take care of them. And I think that is a beautiful thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Um, so you mentioned testing. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that a mm -hmm. little bit. I think that um, testing is kind of a sore subject depending on who you talk to. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very sad that this has become politicized. Yeah, um, very sad. Seems like everything becomes politicized these days. Um, and it shouldn't be because we're talking about real disease affecting human beings. Mm -hmm. But uh, testing, uh, from what I understand, we were a little bit behind the eight ball in that we didn't have the numbers of tests available that areas were needing. Um, and in my opinion, I think that's one of the reasons why our numbers have remained a little bit on the low side. I think we probably have more people who have had COVID-19 or coronavirus, but they just haven't been tested. And maybe didn't even know. Some people never have symptoms. Some people have mild symptoms. And then there's 16 to 20%, depending on the study that you read, that um, the people end up with life-threatening symptoms where it moves into their lower respiratory tract and they often require mechanical ventilation, organ support because they go into organ failure mm -hmm. and septic shock and things like that. So, so testing is just now becoming available and I think even now the tests are somewhat limited and I think, I believe now the CDC is working with state and local health departments. Okay. And so depending on how the disease is in the state and that area, I think that they are, um, I, th I think that you probably need to meet certain criteria in order to get a test. I don't, I, I'm sure if you really think that you have it, you'll be able to go somewhere and get a test. It's just that it's not like you can go to Walmart and buy one off the shelf, right, right. you know, because everybody forgets that this is a totally new disease in human beings. You hear the word novel coronavirus. Novel means new. Coronavirus is a strain of viruses that's found in animals and human beings alike. Um, yeah, most people have had Yes. Coronavirus yes. in the form of a common cold mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because that's one of the strains. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there can be a coronavirus that might affect a dog that mm -hmm. doesn't affect cats. 
And unfortunately, somewhere along the way, they think this coronavirus m somehow mutated a little bit and hopped into the human population. And now what they're worried about is the fact that there is community spreading, which means that people are testing positive who have not traveled to any of the locations. But have been out in the community. And they haven't been around anybody who has been known positive. So like for, from a cruise ship or Italy right, or China. Right. Or, okay. So it would be just, you know, anybody in the community just like who gets the flu. it. And yeah. they don't know where they got it. And so mm -hmm. when it gets down to community spreading, that is um, frightening. And that's really... Um, the third requirement to be defined as a pandemic. Right. Why don't you tell what the other two are? Um, CDC has not come out and said this is a pandemic yet. There are some news outlets who are calling it a pandemic. There's some physicians and some experts, scientists, epidemiologists who are calling it a pandemic. To be a pandemic, it has to be a disease that um, is serious enough that it's life-threatening. It has to be global. In other words, affecting many, many countries, mm -hmm. which now we it are is. seeing. Mm -hmm. And it has to be um, community spread, which is exactly what we're starting to see, especially in the Washington state area. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just one skilled nursing facility that's involved now. There's um, a second nursing facility east of Seattle. Oh. And um, there's also an uh, independent assisted living complex oh. that they've had some positive tests at as well. So Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, is there any kind of prophylactic treatment that people can do if they think they've been exposed? You know, the best thing you can do is prevention. I mean, that sounds like too simple, but there's no cure for COVID-19 coronavirus. It's not like a bacteria where you, can, you can take an, an antibiotic. antibiotic. Mm -hmm. you it's know. a viral yes. disease. So yes. there's no cure. And right now, focus should be on, um, on prevention. It should be on limitation of the spread if it is um, in an area and the focus um, should be on treatment of the symptoms. But there are some, some basic things and I like to think that CNAs do these things anyway. Of course. You know, one of the most important things is hand washing. Um, that's something that we're used to doing anyway. And it's amazing to me when I look at Facebook and all these people who think that hand washing is a brand new <laughs> technique to prevent <laughs> illness. So it, yeah. It's kind of frightening when you see that. Um, but yes, thorough extra diligence in hand washing is a good thing. Um, you just can't do it too much. My hands are as dry. <laughs> I look like a snake right now yeah. because I've washed my hands so much. I, I shared a post the other day on Facebook that was about um, wash your hands like you've just peeled a jalapeno and want to touch your eyes. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that's another thing. I'm glad you brought that up. Don't touch your face. I went to Walmart yesterday and I was so angry. Well, I probably shouldn't say where I went. I went, I went to, to a store. A, I went to a large big box store. Um, and they usually have the wipes for the car. Yes. And I, if they don't do anything else, it makes me feel better in my head, mm -hmm. you know. And so I went, and they, they were out of wipes. And I was so mad, I went and got the lady that, you know, now they check wipe. your receipt yeah. when you leave if you oh, have God. anything that's not in a bag. Oh. And so um, I went to the lady, and I said, you guys are out of sanitizing wipes for the carts, and this is not the time to run no, out. No, no, no. And um, they had some alcohol foam, and I got a paper towel and just, like, wiped my cart yeah. down to make myself feel better. But they say, do not touch your face. Do not touch your face. But do you know how easy it is? You just randomly touch your face. You know, you'll have an itch, a scratch, you brush your hair back, you, you know. My allergies are killing me now and I keep <laughs> yeah, touching my eyes. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so I got in Walmart yesterday and I was thinking about everything and I tend to be a little bit paranoid anyway. And I couldn't keep my hands off my face. I tried to put them in my pocket, but then I couldn't push the cart. <laughs> And every minute I noticed, and I usually don't touch my face, but every minute I noticed I was up there fidgeting with my glasses, my lips are chapped, I just, 
<laughs> Maybe so, it's that, you know, when they tell you not to do something exactly. or, you know, when your hands are messy, your nose itches. Exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. So, um, you know, avoid touching your face. Keep your, you know, wash your hands. Um, if you handle money, money, some of the dirtiest oh stuff my gosh. out there. Can I share a story with you about mm -hmm. that? Yesterday I was at a store. It was not a big box store. It was a little box store, but the cashier, I was buying some you know, cleaning products and some cold medicine because my husband thinks he has a cold. And, and she said, are you worried about that COVID or that coronavirus? I said, mm -hmm. well, a little, you know, yeah. And she said, well, you know, if you're going to get it, you're going to get it. And I said, okay, well, let's talk about that a minute. I said, do you feel the same way about catching a cold or catching a flu from somebody? Do you do prevention from that? If you know your coworker has a cold and they sneeze on you, do you go wash your face or your hands or whatever? She said, no, if I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it. And that scares me. And that person handed me money. I tell you what, I keep sanitizer in my car and it has been used so much because yes. I touch that money and I'm like, okay, I'm going right. to, you know, oh, right. who knows? Exactly. So, um, you know, that's the kind of attitude that upsets me because I think that I'm strong enough that I could probably survive, you know, bring it mm -hmm. I'm not really. Yeah. I, I think I could survive COVID-19, but then I think my, my mother just last Tuesday had a total knee replacement oh. and was in the hospital for two days. And she's at home right now. And, and I get to thinking about when I go down and visit her and do her laundry and things, what am I dragging into her? So yes. I think that we have to take it we have to make it our responsibility to stay healthy and even if you're not afraid of, of the symptoms and you don't think that it would negatively impact your health we don't want to spread this to somebody our grandmas could. and our grandpas and everybody at the skilled nursing facilities and the assisted livings and there's a lot of younger people out there we have a board member who is very immunocompromised corinne right. ganchinitz Love you, Corinne. I didn't touch my lips. Didn't touch my face. But the, I'm sending you kisses, Corinne. The magic Corinne. Of TV. Yeah. <laughs> so Corinne um, has had significant health issues, and she has undergone some chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's very susceptible to things right now. And so I think not only about our elderly, but about the, but about the Corinne's of mm -hmm. the world and, and keeping them healthy. And so anything that I can do to keep myself healthy, to help protect them. That's what I'm going to do. I love that. That's important. Well, we want you all to think about this. We'd like to hear what you're doing in your facilities. We're going to have a show um, next week with one of our facilities mm -hmm. talking about the measures they've taken, which I think have been wonderful, actually extraordinary. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and what yes. they're doing, how they're training their staff and mm -hmm. making people aware and communicating with families. So we're going to be talking about that more. We'd love to hear what you're doing in your facility. So please feel free to, to comment here or on our Facebook page where we'll post the video. And... Um, Let's all work together to make everybody safe, those we care for, protected, and try to get through this. Yep, you know? stay healthy. All right. Sure. So this has been a special report of our COVID-19 coverage, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.